Today I'm coming at you folks with a hangover. hangover. So it's gonna be all smooth vibes as we sip on the sweet nectar of premature fall cash grabs. Pumpkin spice lattes. Yo, Starbucks, sponsor me. So sit back and cozy up while we talk about fairy tales, philosophy, and not hot dogs. Silicon Valley. Spoilers ahead. <laughs> this is a struggle. All right. Here we go. There's a fairy tale called The Tale of the Piper of Hamelin, or as we know it, the Pied Piper. The fairy tale is set in this town of Hamelin, which was suffering from a rat infestation. One day this guy with a flute and a flamboyant set of threads comes into the town and he's like, Hey yo, Mr. Mayor, what's going on, man? Heard you need an exterminator. And the mayor is like, Yeah, for sure, we got a whole rat thing going on here, and they're just eating all of our cheese, being rats. But you only have a pipe, and if I may say, sir, you look very pied in that outfit. Should you have rat traps or something? And the piper goes, Nah, don't even worry about it, man. I'm just doing me. I'm pro. I'm the best. Nobody's ever done a better job at catching rats than me. I know more about rat catching than the mob. Forget about it. And the mayor's like, Okay, tell you what, Mr. Piper, you pied man, you. I promise to pay you when the job is done. Piper thinks about this for a second, and he's like, Yeah, usually my fee is half up front, but tell you what, you seem like a good dude and you're a politician, so you must be trustworthy and honest. So I'll just do the job and you can pay me through after pay. Don't even worry about it. I'll just have these rats out of here in no time. So the piper starts playing his flute. I like to think he played a cover of Waterfalls by TLC. And the rats are all like, yo man, I don't know what that is, but I like it. I'm gonna go jump in the river. Peace out world. So the piper is taking care of this rat problem for the mayor. All the rats are dead. They ran into the river, so they're gone. Not coming back for the Pied Piper sequel. And the Piper goes to the mayor and is like, Hey, yo, mayor, we talked about that payment time to pay the Piper. And the mayor's like, Oh, man, no, you sh no, man. I, 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 got, I, got, I left my wallet at home. So it's, it's, and I gotta, I gotta move some money around, my savings, my checking. It's a whole thing. Um, so I just, I, I, I can't pay you, man. I'm sorry. It's, sorry, not sorry. I, I spent it all on this war in Afghanistan. So that's the, that's, that's the truth. I'm sorry. I'm not paying you. And the Piper's all pissed off. He's like, yo, man, what, what the fuck, man? What the deal? What's the deal, man? We, we agreed. We had a promise. We, we shook hands on it. I invited you to my daughter's wedding. You're not going to pay me now? What the fuck? What, what's going on here? So screw you, man. I'm going to come back and I'm going to get my revenge. And the mayor's like, huh, okay, whatever, man. You and your pied ass outfit can go screw off to fashion week. I don't even care. I'm not paying you. Get the fuck out of my town and take your stupid pipe with you. Idiot. And it's right around here at the four minute mark of all my videos where most of you guys drop off. So I'm going to just say, hey, don't go anywhere. But if you are, just like and subscribe real quick. Please, thank you. It helps a lot. Anyways, so the Piper's mad salty and he makes good on his promise. He shows back up at the town when all the parents are at church for some reason. I guess everybody in this town has like the same religion and like not one person stayed home with their kid. Just left all the kids at home because like all the kids are atheists, but the parents are all like Christian, so there's just this whole thing. I get, I don't know. I just, it's it's old stories. I don't know why kids aren't going to church too, or why the parents are being so irresponsible to leave their kids home alone. But anyways, the Piper shows up. He plays the exact same song that he played for the rats, but this time he doesn't attract the rats. He attracts the kids, and he takes them into a cave, and they're never seen again. And that's all we know about the story of the Pied Piper. I struggled through that, and I really hope it wasn't a struggle listening to it. Anyway, it's this tale of the Pied Piper where we get the saying, it's time to pay the Piper, which is to say, it's time to pay the consequences for greedy and immoral behavior. And it's this fairy tale whose central theme provides the overarching premise that makes Silicon Valley a gem of a comedy show. Real quick, Silicon Valley was created by Mike Judge, who also created movies like Idiocracy, Extract, and Office Space. He's got this reputation for mocking conventional wisdom and forecasting its potential long-term detriments to the world around us, packaging truly disturbing insights about modern ideas and wrapping them in comedy. And Silicon Valley is no different. It's a show about a guy named Richard Hendricks who starts a tech startup in Silicon Valley. He develops this app that is intended to 
to identify copyrighted materials in songs, kind of like, you know, the thing that demonetized my Wilfred video. Go check that one out. And truly nobody gives a shit about his app. It's kind of a terrible app, but under the hood of it is this compression algorithm that allows files to be shrunk down to a fraction of their size without any degradation or loss in quality. He gets an offer from not Sergey Brin, who runs a company that isn't Google, to buy this algorithm for a life-changing amount of money. But Richard decides against it in favor of starting his own company called Pied Piper. He begins his journey with this mission of doing things differently than all the other tech companies. He doesn't want to prioritize money or devalue the work of the people underneath him. He wants to create a truly better company. It's a noble cause and I think it's an idea that a lot of people have in their hearts whenever they go off and start their own companies. But it's intentionally written as this manifestation of what the Harvard Business Review calls the Founder's Dilemma, which basically studies a phenomena in business where less than 25% of startup founders retain control of their company through the point of an IPO. In other words, he's in way over his head and he has no idea how to actually run a company. Over the course of the show, we end up getting a bunch of characters who who are all really just a bunch of intelligent clowns and their quirks are exacerbated by the absolute circus that is the valley. Each character represents a different kind of brilliance with their own ethical code and shortcomings, but we'll get into those later. For now, if you're still watching, like, subscribe, don't forget to do that, please and thank you. Silicon Valley is a one of a kind show. It doesn't just write jokes, it takes inspiration from very real events that happened in the tech world that are almost too ridiculous to be true, which is why the show is able to continue to up the stage each season without ever running out of material. But they didn't just lean on any old funny story, they handpicked the ones that continue to make the central conflict of Silicon Valley more and more compelling. At its heart, it's a show about goodness and morality, and every episode continues to ask the same question in new contexts. Can ethics and money coexist? The A plot of each season, season, seasonings, pumpkin spice seasonings. The A plot of each season usually revolves around some kind of threat to the future of Pied Piper, but central to solving that threat comes a series of ethical decisions that characters have to grapple with. Each character represents a different moral philosophy, and they all have limits to their ethics. Lori is the stand in for utilitarianism. Ehrlich is kind of a glutton, and he represents hedonism. Dinesh is purely self interested representing egotism. Guilfoyle represents cynicism and nihilism. Jared represents moral absolutism. And Monica represents moral relativism. But ultimately, it's Richard who, at the end of the day, has to take in all of these perspectives and learn from all of these characters around him in order to make the choice between business and ethics. A choice that will inevitably have consequences down the road. This thoughtful structuring of characters around moral perspectives makes it easy for us to accept their flaws and have Having that defined moral compass also helps the characters stay funny without getting flanderized. The way that these personalities conflict and congeal keeps the energy of the show entertaining, meaningful, and downright hilarious. But what makes the show matter is that not one of these characters is ever right. No matter how compelling one perspective may seem to be, the right choice is never easy, and the morality that helped the team navigate one problem doesn't hold up when facing the next challenge. We explore both the merits and limitations of each moral perspective. Every victory that our character experiences comes part and parcel with another defeat or setback, whether it's moral or financial. In fact, oftentimes when Richard leads the team with a morally upright decision, it costs their business money or opportunity. And when he chooses to walk the left-hand path and behave like a morally corrupt megalomaniac, they find wealth and success, but it's built upon a house of cards that threatens to fall apart over the long term. They have to choose over and over and over whether they will take a step forward on the immoral path path to success or take the two steps back necessary for the sake of altruism and find a solution that may be harder and challenge them in painful ways. It's that constant conflict between morality and success that makes it all the more meaningful to us when the team occasionally does find themselves being rewarded for their good deeds. And it keeps our hope alive that maybe they can find a middle ground where morality and fortune can coexist. But these victories tend to be short-lived and as I said at the beginning, eventually the time comes to pay the piper. This dilemma 
comes full circle in the final season. In the face of a total defeat, Richard gives an uncontrollable AI access to all the compression power behind Pied Piper in a desperate last ditch attempt to save his company, disregarding any sense of ethical implication as to what that could lead to. This petty act ends up saving the company and they go on to find the success that they've been pursuing for the total run of the show up to this point, but it comes at a huge cost in the final episode. We see that Pied Piper has finally reached its apex and has defeated all of its enemies. The finale centers around the release of a peer-to-peer -peer internet that has the potential to not only democratize information, but to prove to the valley that you can build a unicorn through ethical behavior. Except we know that Pied Piper isn't that. The very monument that they've tried to build to idealism gets threatened by their biggest moral lapse, the AI machine that they use to cheat their way over the finish line. In a climactic finale, they have to make a choice reminiscent of the Pied Piper fairy tale. Be like the mayor who refuses to accept the consequences of his choices, or pay the piper and go down permanently in a blaze of inglory. The documentary style of the final episode calls to light how the characters we've followed have grown, but also shows how they kept true to their honorable motivations in season 1 to be unlike the rest of the tech world. This is what leads to the inevitable conclusion of the series. Our characters do what's right, and because of that, they lose. Because in a world where value is defined by potential capital, moral codes are replaced with Java and C++. It's a mathematical certainty that no good deed shall inevitably go unpunished. Silicon Valley matters because too often in media we want the happy ending. It validates our belief that goodness will prevail and gives us an escape from the ethical dilemmas that we face in our own lives. But Silicon Valley doesn't give us that. It gives us a hero wrought with pettiness and shows us that idealism is foolish, but without it, the world is perilous. It doesn't pander to the Hollywood trope of good guys and underdogs coming out on top. It craftfully uses comedy as a way to help us accept the reality that goodness doesn't always prevail. It's a cautious tale where the good guys don't win, where the path to hell is paved with good intentions, where we can see the flaws inherent in our system, and where eventually everyone has to pay the piper. And because it's a comedy show, we as the audience are more willing to accept that painful truth, because we can see the hero lose and still laugh and have a good time with it. But we can't forget that this story is also based in reality. This story is one of the thousands that shape the world around us today. We've given these types of companies access to our our homes, our memories, our bodies, and even let them tell us how to think. We've released a plague upon ourselves that is complex in its morality with no clear or simple solution. Technology has the power to be both our savior and our doom. We must decide as a society whether the ends justify the means, and whatever relationship mankind chooses to have with technology will come with an inevitable cost. We just have to be ready to pay the piper when that time comes. Honestly, I could have made a whole 20, 30 minute episode on the show, but YouTube tells me I need to make my videos shorter. So that's what I'm going for here. Anyways, if you want to prove the algorithm wrong, then like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Thank you. I am extremely hungover, but I got my hashtag PSL keeping me company. That shit is like life. It's so rejuvenating. So yeah, here's a couple of other videos. Here's another video. Maybe you'll like it. Uh, go check it out. I have a bunch of content like this. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. And if you want to see longer form comment, content, leave that in the comments. Thank you.